Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fast Pass with us. I'm Jason. I'm Amber. And we have our special guest. Whoa! Oh, it's the Halloween guy, Hi, John Scott. Scott. How's it going? So uh, today we are going to be going over our top five favorite mazes from Not Scary Farm. And also discuss our least favorite one. So the way that this is going to work is if one of us has the same answer, it's going to be pushed down to the lower number and we'll talk about it when it reaches that point. So we will start with our guest, number five. Number five for me? Yeah. Uh, I'll probably go with Dark Ride. Woo. I have it lower on mine. Even higher? Well, a lower number. But higher ranking? Higher ranking. Okay. I have that as a, a higher ranking. Do I have this? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, then, what's your number five? My number five is Halloween Hoop Nanny. That is my number five as well. <laughs> You serious? Yep, that is my number five. I didn't even include it on my list. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm actually very pleasantly pleased. I liked that they did something with the log ride instead of the mine train. I don't know if that's because they actually had scares in there. They got us a couple times. So those those scares coming out from those doors is going bleh. Was enough for me. I was pretty scared. I jumped quite a few times. Well, the thing I liked about it was uh, for all of those Disney fans out there, Billy Hill and the Hillbillies actually did the song for the Halloween Hoot Nanny. And I don't know their name for knots, but it's like Crazy Kurt and something. Do you know their yeah, name? So, yeah. I yeah. Can't remember the name so the they actually did the song for it. So that made it a little bit more entertaining for me as a big Billy Hill fan. I know you. He mentioned it at least five times in line. I was pretty excited. And so what did you think about it? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool that they um, kind of did a permanent layover for it as far as the whole Halloween season, even during the daytime. Yeah. So that's what was really neat about it. Uh, obviously, we had the scares popping out during right. the day. But um, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really neat. Uh, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't like scary, yeah. scary, but oh man, it, it was, it, it was, it was fun. It was fun. It added to the event is, is how I look at it. I think more of these Halloween events should incorporate their rides with it. And I appreciate that they actually make something that it's Halloween time, you know? I mean, even people like, like you were saying, don't go to the Halloween event. It's nice to have that touch of the holiday just to go to the park and see it. So. Compared to going in the day and you just see uh, the beef tubing cobwebs just all over yeah, the yeah. park and that's kind of, and you know, whatever they do at camp, spooky during right. that time, you know, we've never been for that, but it's cool Maybe seeing we'll that. Add to the list of number four? Number four. I'll say my number four <laughs> since uh, I haven't really gone yet. My number four is Pumpkin Eater. That's lower on higher on your list. I'll give you a four for me as well. Oh, all right, all right. Well, so I guess we gotta wait though. We gotta. So, what's your number four? My number four was trick or treat. Uh, it's lower on my list. Higher. Well, yeah, that same name. Okay, well then. I guess we move on. Okay, so <laughs> my number three is a uh, dark ride. Same. Um, Oh, I, I liked this a lot. It was really cool. They, they actually have the track going through the entire maze. It, it, was, it was really neat. And you, you get the feel when you're going through. There's people jumping out scaring you. And then there's animatronics supposed to be for the ride. And it, it was it was really, really cool. I, I liked that one a lot. The whole thing with the track, that was one detail I loved seeing actually in this, in this maze. The whole fact that they had the metal piece like track pieces on the ground mm -hmm. um one thing why for me it was a little bit lower was the fact that wasn't sure if it was supposed to be like an abandoned dark ride mm -hmm. and then they've taken over and if that was the case something that was missing that i would have loved to have seen was just cobwebs yeah yeah the attraction there was yeah. an yeah. element that was missing I'm not okay. quite sure if it was just because it was new and it was something that they didn't think about yet for when they built it but that's something i would have liked to have seen to kind of make it more like it's abandoned but there's also like dead victims like in the ride cars on the yeah. like 
the ride was happening and right. they killed these people. So that's, that was another, like I'm saying, the time frame about whether it was running, if it was banned, and like what was happening there. It's something right. I would like to see something more happened. kind of explained. Yeah. yeah. But otherwise, like the whole, it very much reminded me of like um, uh, the castle ride at uh, in Santa Cruz. That whole oh uh, yeah 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 haunted castle and, yeah electronics yeah, like and walking through that that's what I loved about this yeah. is yeah. just that feel I thought it was really cool seeing like the actual ride vehicles like you were mentioned yeah that yeah, like that was totally added because they could have left that the out and you would have still known yeah. the concept but that was a really good touch of uh, not magic <laughs> okay so all right back to my number three. so then what was your number three Trick or treat. I have it higher on my list. And it was my number four. Okay. My number two, Infected. Infected wasn't even on my list. What? Yeah. Infected was my number two as well. Why? Number two. My number two <laughs> is Pumpkin Eater. Well, should wow. we talk about it? Infected or Pumpkin Eater? <laughs> we'll talk about uh, Pumpkin Eater because... Well, where's Pumpkin Eater at on your list? It was number four, and number it was, four it was number well. four, too. You had it at number two. Okay. All right, so yeah, Pumpkin Eater. Pumpkin Eater, okay. Yeah, go Holy ahead. Lead us off. Holy carp. Pumpkin Eater. Oh, my gosh. That scared the crap out of me. Yeah, I, I liked it. There was a... Uh, a really cool element they do where you like are you're like walking through the inside of a pumpkin and they have like the guts of the pumpkin yes, hanging down. Yes, and there was stuff dripping on they you. They had water dripping done. on you. I was <laughs> done at that point. That was my favorite part. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> like cuz <laughs> me being a haunted house person that runs one um, like walking through I'm constantly like feeling those things to figure out what it is <laughs> and then I hit that point where those ones are all wet and I'm just like oh what <laughs> and then you feel the water like hit you and and then the smell of pumpkin yeah, yeah. In there. that was a nice oh, yeah. touch by them um, I don't remember last time not really used smells like intricate right. smells like that right. but that was very in your face like pumpkin smell and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I like it when the mazes when you go through it starts inside and you go outside and you go back inside. Like, yeah. I always think that's a cool thing. Yeah. Uh, what I really enjoyed was the whole kind of second part where it kind of felt very familiar with corn stalkers. Corn stalkers, which, yep. When Knots did corn stalkers it was incredible. Um, so yeah, having that whole second part where Kevin turned into corn stalker, I got very excited. Yeah, I loved that maze. Yeah, probably paying homage to because corn stalker was there for a long time. Yes. Okay, infected. This was incredible. By far the best experience at Knots. Um. They get you so pumped, they like hand you these guns, and then they're like, okay, there's a zombie breakout, and you are the ones that are going to help us take it, like, uh, it, it's so cool. Yeah, and, um, because you didn't go last year, right? I didn't go last year. So yeah, when, once they added it into a maze, supposed to be four, it was like a whole huge right, right. area that you'd run around now, it's, it's more enclosed, um, you kind of get a little bit more rattled because there's like the part where you're walking through like a train, yeah, and a subway, and there's like everywhere eight, literally eight zombies, like four on one side, four on the other, and they're like coming through, and you're just kind of got your head like tucked <laughs> in your chest, like trying to shoot them off. Just the visuals and like the feel, like they did a really good job with the sets yeah. for that to be a maze. You know, it feels right. open when you're outside, and you know each area has like facades, and it just it. It's really cool. Yeah. I love that one. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it was just because I was at the back of the group pretty much the whole time. I just, I didn't really get the same experience. I... Could be. All the zombies were dead by the time I got to them. I'm just going to say all the zombies were dead because I was in front of her and I was just... Slaying. Crack well, shot. <laughs> <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't separate us. It was because there were four people in our party, and then there was some other guys that they lumped with us, too. I think there was two. Two or three. Well, it was enough. It was enough to throw off the balance. Okay. <laughs> Something I really love about the uh, the gun system they use is uh, after you get so many kills, your gun actually upgrades. Are you serious? So then it goes into know. rapid what? fire. So, like, if you get so many kills, you get to the point where you hold down the trigger, and it's just rapid... <laughs> So you can just 
hammer down uh, zombies, and then uh, and then also from there it'll upgrade again to where it's like rapid fire shotgun shells. Like it's just like pow 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 pow. Then you're like exploding that. zombie heads. Uh, with the I had no so, idea. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That was... Hmm. Sorry, we haven't talked about your treat. That's because that's my number one. Ah. Trick or treat. I absolutely loved this new element they added to the mazes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was great. I got scared quite a few times. Uh, if you watch our video, I'm walking through and it's pitch black, and all of a sudden the chimney like lights up and shoots smoke. You hear me scream on the video. So, yeah. I liked it. Um. I mean, obviously it was down at number four, so it wasn't necessarily high on my list, but um, I liked it. I really enjoyed the new element with the flashlights. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, is that new this year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we didn't go last year, so. Um, definitely a good way to revamp a, a maze that's been there for quite a few years. Um, but I really liked it, and I got... It takes a lot for me to get scared, so... For that maze to get me a few times, like I, I, I was very impressed, and I liked that element. And the, it, it was so cool because it like it changed colors. Like when you went into a different room, it like felt, it went to like black light, and so your flashlights are making the room turn into like a black light element. And then as you get into this room, like the room was scary as it was. Like I remember thinking when I walked in, I'm like, whoa, this is dark. There was like bodies hanging and stuff. And it was, I was literally like, oh, this is scary. And all of a sudden my flashlight started shaking. It was almost like it harnesses like what you're supposed to be feeling. That's yeah. the best way to, in my opinion, to think of it. it was like, oh man, this is scary. And then it starts, wah, wah. And I'm like, oh, what the heck? So. Yeah, no, uh, Trick or Treat was number three for me. Um, I've always been a fan of that maze, like just by itself, even before the whole lights out thing. Um, just love that maze so them adding this element was really cool and um, right away walking into that first portion and having it just be pitch black and you're just kind of shining your flashlight you're like oh crap I'm gonna get drilled by something <laughs> like, it's like I'm gonna miss it it'll get me or something and um, so yeah um, yeah I love the moments with, uh, when the light would change especially because all it did is help benefit the scares because yeah. the scares in that area they had black light makeup, mm -hmm. so like if you like kind of point your light at their face, you know, you see like glow in the dark effects appearing on their face and everything, yeah. and um, that's just really cool. Um, but yeah, it was it was really neat. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Um, the first time through, we didn't notice the well. I don't know if anybody else did. I didn't notice the um, the black light writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. So the second time we went through the room with the, the black light yeah. on the flashlight, I was like, I was probably making the scares mad, but a person would jump out and I was like, hi, I'm right next to the wall trying to figure out what it says with my... It turns out it's just like magical writing stuff, but... Magical writing. But it's, it's just one of those small little details that... Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you got close enough to the wall with your light, you'd happen to pick up. So yeah. it's those little things that uh, that you kind of appreciate. Exactly. And it really gives you like, wow, you know, there's this thing that's been here, you know, and it's like so you really took the time to do that. <laughs> it's like other people probably don't even notice it. Yeah. You know? But uh, it helps add a, a whole effect to you, you know? Yeah. I agree. Okay, so I actually think you guys both have the same number one. Okay. Shadowlands. Mine too! <laughs> oh. Didn't even make my list. Didn't even make mine. Are you serious? Yeah, it wasn't on my list. Wow. But look at what's on mine. I had Infected, you didn't have it, and then we had the Timberland... Hootenanny. Yeah, the Halloween Hootenanny. <laughs> Tim Timberland! Whatever, whatever. It was there. It was there. Uh, we had that on our list, and he didn't have it. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's why Shadowlands is on you guys' list. Yeah. So basically, my list is the best. We can all agree. Can I start? Go ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that first, you first walk in, they pack you into the room, right? So it's like an intro. So they pack you into this room, right? And you're around this, um, it looks like some sort of person in a monk's garb. 
praying to the suit statue of a samurai and you hear him kind of muttering to himself um, once everybody's in and the doors are shut which I was all the way at the the end because we were the last people packed into this room so I was over at the end and um, the hit the it gets a little dark and then you hear the guy speaking louder and louder and louder and then the lights go out right mm -hmm. and then the the um, statue obviously flips around to the actual samurai and you see him cut the guy's throat and his head falls back and then it goes dark again and apparently I was the special chosen one because when the lights came back on the dude was like right here in my face and I freaked out Oh, it was so scary. But I don't know what it is about the the Japanese mythology, but their um, their scary ghost stories creep me out probably more than any of them. It was the only uh, maze that made me feel legitimately afraid, like not in the fun. Ooh, ooh, this is scary. But I was like sick to my stomach, scared. So that's why it's my number one. I was pretty scared. For me, it's just the, the um, like just the whole quality of that maze, yeah, and um, just how much was put into it, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you know all those different mythologies, you know, mm -hmm. like Japanese demons, uh, the geishas, uh, the samurais, you know how brutal they really were, mm -hmm. and the ghost stories, of course. Um, it's just, it just, it was just so cool. It's something you don't really don't see too much of as far as no. Moscow or anything like that. And uh, it's so effective. They do some really cool things. There's that one room where you walk into the walls are literally like pushing up against you, and mm -hmm. then they got the one scare that's a body with its head smashed in from the rocks, and mm -hmm. that room always messes me up because of the strobes, and one of the walls always ends up bumping me. But um, and then uh, the ending is one of my favorite scenes for a maze. Mm -hmm. um, you got the whole like samurai kind of launching from pad to pad as he's cutting other guys, you know, heads, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and it's just such a cool showing. You're obviously drawn to it, so your eyes are like, whoa, what's going on here? And that's when the scares just hammer you on the yes. other side. And the first year when they did that last year, I got drilled so many times in that maze. In that scene alone, I got hit like three times, and I was just like, oh my god, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we loved it last year. Uh, I, I, I liked it, and I got scared a few times, but not as much as they liked it. <laughs> Didn't make the top five, so I don't. I don't mean to make it sound like it was bad. It was a good maze, honestly. If we were able to have one more pick, that would be the one I would have taken. Right, if you guys would have one more infected, then Six out of Timberland. Ten. I would have No, that, so. I had a hard time picking five. Dude. Um, okay, let's let's talk about uh, the mazes that we didn't like so much. Least favorite. Okay, who wants to start? Um, let's let our guests start it off. Let's, I have a feeling that all three of us, I'm curious to see. I think we, is Mine is Voodoo. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah, it is different. Okay, go ahead, Voodoo. Uh, for me, it was just, um, this is the first year they, they had you going through the exit. You yes. walked in the maze in reverse, that. and it yeah. was just, it was so stale, the way they made it go. I mean, before you'd walk up, and there's this whole cool facade of a New Orleans town, and somewhere mm -hmm. where you might actually be, and then you lead off into the backwoods. And you start by going in the backwoods, and then you end up, and yeah. then you end up in New Orleans, where a whole sacrifice happens, like in New Orleans, and it's just kind of like, what the hell is going mm -hmm. on? But, but the whole beginning, and it, it actually, when you reverse something like that, it, there's so many of the scares that were meant to work with the other direction. So when they changed changed the flow, they just fell off, and it just it seemed you know different, and it just didn't work. So it was like, instead of them coming out behind you and pushing you, they're kind of coming in weird angles. And it, I just didn't get any of the scares. They were popping out at me, but nothing was working. So. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. I didn't get scared at all. I did like the... That was the one at the end, right? Where 
the snake was there that yeah that was a brand new scene that was a cool ending though like for it but i agree they should have went reverse that, that ending if they would have put that at the original end and had the maze go in the normal way and had that as an add-on like in like a little shack or something mm -hmm. Probably would have been yeah, way better. Yeah. Probably would have enjoyed it. Yeah. it. Would have made more sense, kind of going out the woods. And there's this whole sacrificial yeah. uh, group, you know, with this giant serpent. You know, that might live in the swamp. It makes a little bit more sense. Yep, least favorite. My least favorite was Red Barn. I'm so glad you picked Red Barn because I, it's not my least favorite, but I was so frustrated with <laughs> that maze. What's your least favorite? Well, we have to talk about yours first. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's talk about Red Barn. So go ahead, you start. So, okay, so at the beginning, they, I've never heard them give this kind of speech before. Because they're like, you need to walk fast, but don't run. You need to walk fast so you can catch the story, but don't run. And I was like, okay, that's a weird way to start off the maze in the first place. But, um, so you get in there, and I guess it's supposed to make you feel like this feeling of urgency, but you're like rushing and rushing trying to get through this maze. And I, there really wasn't all that much going on. I didn't, I didn't catch any sense of a story except all these people were screaming about, "Help me, get me out." I, I highly agree. I very much so. When they said you need to move quick so you can catch the story, I was, I got excited. I'm like, "All oh, right, this will be cool." Because so far we'd seen like the stories and everything, and it was exciting. And so I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be fun." So we go and we're like rushing and they're getting us to try and rush through and mm -hmm. literally it would not have made a difference if we were going slow. And Amber said on our last video how she believed that maybe they had us go to kind of maybe give you that that fear of like, oh, I got to hurry, I got to hurry. But I think it fell flat. I didn't. I felt the same. But I will. I, I, I will. The reason why it's not my least favorite is because the stuff inside actually looked really cool. Like, all the, uh, there, there's one scene that I particularly like is they make you duck to get into, like, a crate. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, a guy standing there, like, like hollering at you while you go through. And I think he was wearing a pig mask. I could be wrong. But it was, uh, there were things I actually enjoyed about the way it looked and appeared. But mm -hmm. that sense of urgency, I just, I thought there was no reason to do that. And it just, it just aggravated me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what'd you think? Uh, again, with that one, we saw it last year for its first year. And again, they switched it up. Uh, they didn't have this whole, you gotta move, urgency thing. Um, and I think even the first year, there was they had like a lot of victims this year, like kind of popping out like, oh, hurry up, you gotta get out. Um, the first year, I think it was more like the actual scares popping out, mm -hmm. and trying to get you and kill you and defeat you to their animals or whatever. But um, yeah, this year, you know, people could jumping out, kind of going, "Oh yeah, hurry up!" You know, I don't, I don't know. Like you were saying, I, I didn't feel anything about that. It didn't really like make me like, "Oh, I guess I better hurry." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like maybe if they would have had a victim with a scare come out and like almost like grab the victim and pull them away, and then have another one chase you or something, you know, just to kind of give more of that push. Right. Because when a person's just telling me to run. Like, they're covered in blood. I don't really care. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. It's like, okay. Like. So my least favorite is going to be Paranormal Inc. And here's the thing about Paranormal Inc. That intro that you get is so great. It is phenomenal. Out of all the introductions we got, I like that one the most. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you go into the maze... And that's where it, like, the greatness of that maze just ends, in my opinion. I just, you walk down hallways, and it's little, like, there's nothing in there but blue lights. It's, it, it seemed like it, and I don't mean to say that the energy was low, the scares were doing what they could do, but it just seemed like it wasn't, it fell kind of flat. Yeah. I felt the intro was really good. It scared me, and then it pressed you into the maze, and I thought the maze was okay. There could have been more scares in that. Um, but then, once you reach the part where you're heading into that red light simulating where you're supposed to go into hell, mm -hmm. I was completely lost at that point, because all of a sudden you're leaving the asylum, and then you're faced with a red light in your face, and that I just remember shouting, what the heck is going on? 
I'm lost. Um, I completely agree. Even its very first year when I went through Paranormal Inc., the opening is, yeah, incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of work. Um, story's great. They really put out the story so you know what you're getting into. But then, yeah, when we walked through the maze, it was, I mean, the sets were good, everything was good, the scares, I mean, they had some good spots to hide from, but, um, and I mean, there's like some effects that they use that are pretty cool, like, um, they have the haze fog with that red light, mm -hmm. and like, we were going through, and then all of a sudden you just see a hand break the beam of the red light, and then like, go back, um, that we literally had a conversation with uh, John Cook, the maze creator, of that maze, and when we talked to him, we were like, what was up with that whole hallways with the blue lights, where there's nothing going on? Like, I was like, were you guys short on scares? Like, what was the deal with that? And he said, apparently, it's you going into a different plane of, like, the ghost world. And um, I was okay. still just like, okay, well, that was way too long of a transition. Like, right. And not only that, but it didn't, it didn't come across that way. No. It doesn't. Like, it, unless you know that, which we heard from the maze creator, mm -hmm. even then we're like, well, that was a long transition, but nothing. It was like long. such a big maze. It wasn't maze, explained. You know? Now we would like to say thank you to the Halloween guy. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything uh, you want to plug, promote, put over? Um, yeah, you can always check us out, HigbyHorrorHaunt.com, see uh, all we got going on with the haunt this year. Uh, we got two events going on, we have our normal haunt that will be set up in our normal location, and then uh, we actually got picked up to do uh, Boomers in Modesto, so we'll be doing two scare zones, as well as a zombie laser tag. So yeah, we, we actually uh, went through the Higby Horror Haunt, and it's really cool, so... Uh, look for that video as well. Amber is a scare in there. That's right. All right, guys. If uh, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you want, right there. Follow us on uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff. We'll, we'll see, see you real soon. soon.